This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website or domain, check out squarespace.com. Hey everybody, and welcome to a new video. Have you ever posted a photo on social media and had someone comment, that's nice? In this video, I'm going to explain why this may not be a compliment and that getting that's nice as feedback may look attractive in the beginning, but isn't a great goal in photography and how to stop taking nice photos, but taking great photos. Stay till the end to hear the feedback that when you hear it, it means you've successfully graduated from the That's Nice School of Photography. My name is Simon Dantremont and I'm a professional nature and wildlife photographer living in Eastern Canada. I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for nature photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. Open up your minds and One of the challenges that comes from having a YouTube channel on photography is the risk that I'll give the impression that what makes a great photographer is having the right settings or understanding how ISO works or having the right size sensor. While getting a handle on these things to make the taking of the photo possible is important, never has these things made a photographer great. They are the means to your photo, not the predictor of its quality. So what's the problem with getting that's nice as feedback on your photo? Well, let's look at the definition. The Cambridge Dictionary defines nice as pleasant, enjoyable, or satisfactory. Satisfactory? Ouch. And in the end, that's what's wrong with nice. It sometimes means okay or all right. And the problem with nice is actually not really the photo, it's the path that got you to this point and the track that you're maybe on. What I mean by this is ask yourself, what did I do to improve my photography that led to making nice photos? For many photographers, taking photos that people find nice is often a path of learning the rules and applying them in a way that meets everyone else's expectations. Rule of thirds, put the sun at your back, fill the frame, always shoot at the lowest ISO. If you follow all these rules, expect nice photos. Now, why is this? This is because you're doing the same thing that millions, that's right, millions of other photographers are doing all over the world. If I search for elephant photo on the web, I'll get hundreds of versions of this. Well lit, well exposed, fill the frame elephant shots. The ones that stand out are Photoshop badly with sky replacement or aren't really a photo, but AI created digital art. I have tons of these in my hard drive, but I'll rarely post one on social media. Why? because they look like everyone else's and they don't inspire me to be proud of my own work. If I follow the rule book of photography, this is the photo I'll get. And note, this is the photo you'll keep getting if you stay on the same path. I just came back from leading a photo safari expedition in Botswana. And while I took lots of elephant photos, the ones I'm proud of don't have the sun behind me, aren't shot at ISO 100 and don't fill the frame like the rules say. So here are five tips to help you move away from taking nice photos and to send you on your own journey of discovery to lead to photos your friends will praise and more importantly, that you will be proud of. One, keep asking yourself, what could I do differently? In the heat of the moment, we never seem to stop to think about what could I have done during that action to mix it up. When I'm in Botswana, I'm telling my clients continuously, flip your camera vertical to get the reflection or shoot wide to get the sun or put the camera lower to get the water reflection in the lower part of the frame. It's this type of thinking differently and innovation that will make your photo stand out. And if you're thinking, I can never remember to mix it up or how to, I have a tip. Put these tips on a note and stick it behind your back LCD. Handy. Number two to stop taking nice photos, invent a new thing. That's right, develop a new idea or genre and make it your own. I found these great examples on the web, combine portraits with landscapes, or use props to take your shots, or play with new processing techniques. And in case you're thinking, but Simon, everything's been done and there's no new ideas to be had, bullpucky. Take my friend Nancy Rose. She takes photos of squirrels in little sets she builds in her backyard and uses the photos for books, puzzles, and calendars. I'm so impressed. Or look at Anthony Schmidt who takes photos of model cars using small sets in front of real landmarks using nothing but a phone. He's killing it on Instagram with 350,000 followers. I'll leave links to both of these in the show notes below. 
I'm so impressed by these photographers who just invented a thing. So what's your thing? I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I built my own website using Squarespace and it was really easy. A website is just a great way to have a professional place online where you can show off your work, your service, or your personal brand. Social media are often showing off your work in short clips or little thumbnails and sometimes makes it difficult to monetize as they may not want links to external sites. A website is a permanent home for you and your work and your brand presented in galleries or pages designed by you that show them off at their best. There are lots of useful templates, including ones for specific genres like photography. Or if you're more daring and artistic, you can go outside the templates using the new AI feature called Squarespace Blueprint to help you personally curate your own build. It's also a great way to monetize your work by setting up an online store so you can take payments by credit card or even PayPal from all over the world. And now with a new added feature of buy now and pay later with ClearPay and Afterpay. Go to squarespace.com to sign up for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Simon for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. For my third tip, it's time to break some rules. The sun behind you, which is often advised, is rarely the best place to take a photo that stands out from the crowd. Try putting the sun behind your subject. Do this when the sun is low for best effect because it will be softer and get a dark background when you can and go for that rim light while you're at it. Another rule to break, shooting super tight or super wide rather than the fill the frame advice. Filling the frame is boring. Go for tight close-ups that reveal details that people haven't seen before. I do this in wildlife photography all the time. Make the photo about the environment and how your subject fits in it rather than a portrait of your subject only. The worse the weather is, the better it is for showing the world around your subject. For tip number four, time to break even more rules. Some people will say, only take a photo if it's perfect. And if you take more than one, you don't know what you're doing. Another bullpucky story. Shoot, shoot, shoot. In digital, they're free. When there's action in front of you, hit the shutter. Forrest Gump's mother once said, life's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Same with photography. When I get back from a shoot, it's like opening presents at Christmas. All kinds of surprises, fortuitous alignments, and great action. To help you get these action shots, a few tips. When you're walking around, keep action settings on your camera. Lots of shutter speed, autofocus continuous, or AI servo on a Canon. Several focus points, not just one, so that if something quick happens, you're ready for it. And maybe program these to a custom button to recall them quickly. And when action happens, shoot. And tip number five for exploring these new areas of photography, it's being brave. This means having enough courage to not have your photos loved by everyone. That's right, not everyone will love your photos, but maybe that's because you're leaving the mold of what people expect. But you know what? If this means you're innovating and learning new things, maybe this is success because you've left the world of nice photos. Even Einstein thought that quantum physics was weird and couldn't be right, but it was. And in art, many artists pushing the boundaries in creativity will have doubters. You know what? That's okay. You need to break a few eggs to make an omelet and it's not going to be perfect the first time. So innovate, experiment, and trust in your own instinct to be unique. Working to fit into a mold of how others view the world will lead to more nice photos. Only you can show the vision of how you see the world. So get out there and show them what you've got. And I promised you a bonus tip, and that was how to know that you've graduated from the nice university. There are two things people will say that let you know that this has happened. One is when someone says, I knew it was your photo before I read the caption. And the other is, I love your work. The reason these indicate success for you is that your photos are identifiable as yours by their style. And when someone says your work, it means you have a body of work, a number of photos, which represent this style. It means they've seen your photos before, identified with how it made them feel and how they look, and enjoyed the process of adding that to their repertoire they recognize by seeing more. This is when you know you've broken out of the mold of nice and into your own world of having photos that others, and more importantly, yourself, can be proud of. 
If you thought this video deserving, give it a like and YouTube will show it to other photographers wanting to break away from the norms of expectations of others and into their own style. And I sincerely hope that you can use these tips to go out the very next time to take your own unique and amazing photos. I know you can do it.